Hello, today we'll be covering a general overview on the Versa Director. So first thing, type in the IP address of your Versa Director as an HTTPS IP address, and then log in with your username and password. The default username and password is administrator, the capital A, and the password is Versa123, all lower letters. Once you've logged in, you will see the Versa director with all the different tabs. Let's start on the left hand side here. So first we can see the Versa director can be in two different contexts. We can be in the director context, which means we're making changes to templates or to things that are specifically in the director. And we can also be in the appliance context. The appliance context means we're making changes directly to a specific appliance and not changing the template but changing the device itself. So if we click on appliance context and I can pick a specific appliance. So for example today I want to manipulate or change the Los Gatos appliance. So if I click on Los Gatos I'll see that Los Gatos has a hemisphere bank, parent organization, and it has a retail branch that's a child organization. And we would like to make some configurations there so we can click on configuration we can go in here and make network configurations, global router configurations, VRP configurations, for example, uh, class of service in the QoS area, app quas, all kinds of changes that will be directly committed on the device. So underneath the, this tab, you will have interface-based changes. You can have services that can be changed, so specifically SD-WAN type services like SLA policies or you can have objects and connectors that can be changed. And then finally, uh, things like under the Others tab, organizations, profiles, limits, for example, DHCP, or system configurations um, such as uh, subjugation. In this case, this device is subjugated to the director. Again, since we are in the appliance context, this is at the Los Gatos branch, I'm making the changes specifically on this branch. And then the final tab is administration to be able to change specific administrative um, services in the Los Gatos branch itself. Now, we'll go back to the director context, which means now we're making changes to templates or making changes directly to director, but not to the specific device. So we'll start off with organizations. First thing you will do when you uh, get your Versa director is create an organization. Here you will create the parent organization only. So when you create an organization, this will be the parent organization. You can name it uh, uh, top level uh, service provider, top uh, ISP, um, and then you give it a name, a tag. The organization number will automatically be generated there's no parent organization because it is the parent organization. You can select different kinds of um, connectors if you want to add a connector to this, uh, to the CMS, um, and then the specific CMS elements that you want to enable. So this is how you create a parent organization. All children organizations, such as the investment or retail, are actually onboarded directly from workflow. Next tab, again, just like we saw the configuration on the per device basis, here we're making configurations because we're in the director context we're actually making configuration changes to the templates. Here are all the different templates that we have. For example, I would like to see the retail Versa employee template. So now if I'm making changes to VRRP or I'm making changes to classes of service, those are going directly to that template and that template will then be pushed out to multiple devices. Again, same sub tabs here. We have the interfaces tab, we have the services tab, we have the objects and connectors and also the others tab. So configuration is meant to make uh, uh, sub changes underneath templates and you make sure you select the right template you want to modify. In general, to generate or to create templates, we use workflow. And in other videos, um, you can look at workflow on how to create a template or how to create onboard an organization or on onboard advice. So to create a template like we've shown you previously in another video or in the next video, you can go in here, add a template, go in and add all the appropriate number of ports you want for that template, 
click once for WAN, click twice for LAN, and then in the advanced tab, define whether you want direct internet access and across which WAN interface. More details are to follow in the next uh, video. But this is where you create workflows to create a template. Then once you've created a template, you can onboard a device using one of the templates you created, or you can onboard an organization or a controller. When you onboard a device, again, this is specifically using a template to create uh, to onboard a device. So you will create a new device, and this is a new device called San Francisco. And I'll put in the location information for this device, and I'll put the specific bind data and the organization it's tied to. So in this case, we will connect it to, let's say, the retail branch, and we're going to use the specific device template or device group versa employee branch. Again, this then is tied to the device group and it's a post-staging template just like we saw we created those templates now we are actually using this template the retail versa employee template for this device group so all the devices that are in this group will leverage the versa employee template and will uh, get those variables put in there now in the bind data section you will put the specific IP address or for example specific IP addresses or static LAN addresses or uh, IP pools for example for this based on the variables that are in the template. When you hit deploy this will actually create a instantiation of this device and when this device comes on board if the serial number, serial number matches this configuration will be pushed down to that device. So we've talked about organizations, configuration, workflow. Now we can look at our appliances once we've onboarded them and we can see all of our devices here, for example, the Atherton or the Dallas, Los Gatos, even our controller. We can remove a device or we can add a device by either selecting it or by hitting the plus button to create to add an additional uh, appliance here. If we want to actually go in and look at the Atherton branch or CLI into this uh, Atherton branch we can actually clicking on the third icon to the right to open the CLI window. Once the window is open you can then log in directly into the Flex VNF and use CLI to configure the router. Now coming back to the Versa Director, select the branch and click on the Upgrade icon. We can in addition go in and upgrade this device. We select Upgrade, we select which package we'd like to upgrade it with. Obviously you have to upload the package into the Versa Director um, and then we can then upgrade this device by hitting OK. And This will actually push the new image to the device and upgrade it. In this case, all of my devices are already up to the latest and greatest 15.2.R4. So in the appliance context, you can see all your devices. You can also see if they're synchronized and reachable. In this case, we can see the New York branch, for example, is not reachable, and so therefore we can't verify the synchronization. If a device is out of sync, we can then sync the config to the appliance so we would take the config that we have in the director and push it down or we can sync the config from the device which means I will take the configuration from the device and upload it to the um, to the Versa director. We can also compare the two between um, what we, we can also compare the configuration that's in director versus the configuration that's in the appliance so let's pick one for example here the Los Gatos branch and we can compare the uh, the appliance and here we see that the output is zero because none of the config lines are different between the Versa director and uh, the actual appliance. If there was something that was different in the CLI it would show up here in the diff file. It's a very handy tool to see and make sure that then verify that the configuration of the device is in line and synced with the configuration uh, in the director. The next tab is an administration tab where we create multiple administrative functions. 
So for example, in the connectors area, we would create the CMS, the cloud management system, and we would map that cloud management management system, for example, to the vCenter or um, to, a, to a specific organization. Uh, we would also make uh, configuration changes to the syslog or MQP, uh, some analytics information. For example, if you want to add another analytics cluster, this is where you would do it. Uh, and finally, we have an analytics tab where the analytics will actually show us a historical view that's collected data over a certain amount of time. So for example, this is in the last day. This is showing us uh, the controller, Los Gatos branch and the Atherton branch. These are my top sites in terms of by session. We can also see the interconnectivity between my different sites. We can zoom in and look at these different sites here. We can from here also pick a branch or actually click on that branch and go straight to that branch and see the um, how that branch is uh, behaving or the different uh, services in that branch. So in this case we clicked on the Atherton branch and you'll see here this will actually, you can go from it from here directly or you can go to it by clicking on it on the, on the slide there on the graph. Uh, you'll see the usage from a total bandwidth perspective. You'll see the availability um, over the last, in this case, last day. We can see the access circuit usage, how much went across the internet connection and how much went over the broadband connection. In this case, we have two WAN connections. We can look at all the different applications that are going on at this location. And since this is mostly retail, we can look at the retail side of it and we can see all the different applications going on. We can then also look at it from the perspective of bandwidth or volume TX RX or based by number of sessions. And we can zoom in and get further detail further down here by looking at what are the specific flows for DNS, for example. Hit back to go back to that graph. We can also see the SLA metrics because we have our SLA probes. We can see that the SLA was actually fairly good, but in here we actually had, we've gone from 35, 40 milliseconds or 16 milliseconds delay to here we're seeing over 200 milliseconds delay between 8.15 last night and uh, between 9 and 10 o'clock last night for the best effort queue. So right now we're only sending SLA packets in the best effort queue. We can also look at which VRF was used to forward the traffic. So in this case, we have both the Atherton Retail LAN VR and the Atherton Internet LAN VR. And by selecting or deselecting these icons, you can get further detail on each one. So you can kind of see it down here, or enable it or disable it if you'd like to look at it in further detail. And then from a QoS perspective, um, how many packets were forwarded in that uh, class of service? So in this case, the best effort um, class of service, and this is showing you the actual throughput, again, on a uh, expedited forwarding or, for example, best effort or depending on what queues you've enabled. So this is a, a quick summary, just a quick brief view at analytics, there's a lot more information on analytics. We'll have a whole section on analytics. Um, you can also always go to the top dashboard to get an overall perspective for your entire, for the last day, for all of the retail branches added together in terms of applications, domains, session durations, etc. We'll have a follow on video to go more in details on the analytics side. And then finally, we have a monitor dashboard. This monitor dashboard is for real time operations where we can go in and take a look at specific branches or overall health of specific uh, tenants or subtenants. In this case, we're gonna look at, for example, retail. For all my retail branches, I can see that I have 13 interfaces and nine of them that are down. And it'll actually click on it and you can see which interfaces in which branch are down. So this is an aggregate view. Um, number of packet drops, what services are enabled, what are the top applications, uh, hardware, any major minor or critical issues, and recent events. So if I wanna go further down into more detail, I can go inside retail and go only specifically, let's say to the Atherton branch. Here we can actually see the state of this branch. HA has not been configured, but it is reachable. And we can see the location based on uh, how it was entered when the, uh, when the Atherton branch was created. 
CPU usage, disk, uh, memory, critical issues and events. For example, here we had a, uh, looks like a DHCP pool address has been exhausted. So this is a, a, an issue we can go look at. We can look at a different interfaces, again, specifically for this box in this case, um, top applications for this box, and top policies that have been violated. If there's uh, path failures or SLA packets that have been dropped, this is where you would see it. All of this information is not only available through the Versa director, but can also be accessed through the REST API from the Versa uh, REST uh, interface. Both Analytics REST API, also the Versa director API. And then finally, uh, a couple more uh, little insights on the Versa director. We can always look at the task list to see the last task and the status of that task. Hit the refresh button if there's any new tasks that you haven't seen uh, or want to refresh the tasks. You can also open up the task, the last task, or any of these tasks to look at further details. So this is a bit of a running log of all the tasks that have been executed, and you can always look here to see if your task has been executed or if there are issues. Of course, you can also filter on a specific task or name or specific time or date, uh, since there'll be lots of them here. In addition, any alarms that come up will also be seen in the notification window up here. And then lastly, um, on the upper right hand side, it shows me I'm logged in as the administrator. I can go in here and either change my uh, logo that as the administrator, whatever, right now it's the Versa logo, if I change the logo, to the service provider's logo, that will be seen by all the tenants that log into the Versa Director that are subtenants to this um, administrative uh, account. Well, this comes to the end of our Versa quick overview for the Versa Director. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll be logging out now.